you were with Aaron for a long time, as you say, from grade school. And then, you know, he was, I think, a fourth round draft pick, right? Right. But then, obviously, just really had great success in the NFL and got, I think it was a five-year contract for $40 million with the Patriots. Right. What was that like for the two of you when when he was able to a- achieve that? Because that's, that's quite a contract. Uh, of course. Um, I mean, his achievement was, I mean, I always was supportive, but I always tell everyone it wasn't necessarily my money. You know, it was his. It, huge accomplishment, of course. But I don't think anything changed for us. So we were still mellow and um, low-key, private. You know, we just had more money in the bank, in a sense. There's been so much said that there was a parallel lifestyle that, on the one hand, his teammates talk about him as being such a team player and so supportive and speak of him as being a very dedicated athlete that was such a part of such a iconic franchise that the bar to be part of that team was very high. Right. And he was not only part of that franchise, but he was a star in that franchise. But then yet he had relationships with those that were less than desirable. What do you say about that? Um, I'd say, I mean, everyone has their own choice in friends. Um, he didn't have the best choice in some friends, but that doesn't, you know, that didn't make him a bad person. As far as, you know, the relationships he had with outsiders, I don't necessarily know too much about that. I invited everyone into the home that he brought there. I was never rude. Was he a gang member? Not from my knowledge. Mm-hmm. Would you have known? Probably not, to be honest with you. That, that's not the Aaron that I know. Mm-hmm. But you said anybody that he would bring around, you would invite into the home. Right. Did some of those people make you a little nervous? Honestly, I never hung around with them. Um, so it's more or less like you cook and you make food for everyone. You make sure they're comfortable. And then I kind of go and do my own thing. So I wouldn't say I felt uncomfortable in my home. I mean, I, I separated myself. When you were in that situation, was your relationship such that you had the right to say what you thought? I mean, could you step up and say, hey, I don't think you ought to be hanging with those people, and I don't think you ought to be bringing them into our home. I pick and choose my battles, and there's some things that I pressed on and some things that I didn't. When he went through trial, and he was found guilty, and he got his sentence. Guilty of murder in the first degree. Was that a shock to him? Did he think he was going to be found not guilty and go home? I think it was a shock to all of us. We were definitely leaning more towards an innocent verdict. So the day he went in to get the verdict, he expected to walk out of there that day and go home with you? I feel like he he prepared for it in a sense. It just didn't happen the way that he wanted it to. Do you think he was involved in that crime in some way? I truly don't. I've said it over and over. He may have been at the wrong place, wrong time, but I don't think that he, you know, what is said to be out there is actually accurate. Would it matter to you and your feelings for him if if he had made a really bad decision, if he had committed this crime, would it change how you felt about him? It's a hard question.